Let's talk about a couple of like uh, myths around intranasal corticosteroid use because because I see some very um, paradoxical behaviours amongst the medical profession when it comes to the prescription of topical corticosteroids. So, uh, you know, one of the common things that are brought up is bleeding, bleeding in the nose. Uh, that somehow that if you yes. see blood, that you, the spray is doing harm. Well, well, bleeding is nine times related to handedness. So, of wh where you point your nozzle and how you stick it in your nose. If yes. you're right-handed, you'll bleed from your right nose, and if you're left-handed, you'll bleed from your left nose. Uh, and that's really quite a powerful sort of nine-something nine odds ratio. So uh, there's a technique issue there. Now, it's not to say that with, if you keep spraying the one part of your septum, you probably do shut down the mucus gland production in that area. It probably dries out a little bit. If you're spraying the very front of your nose, you probably do can, can create a little excoriated area. And that's, and that's purely a technique phenomenon yes. for most people. Um, the other one that comes up I hear all the time is the sort of myth of atrophy. So this is still touted around. Now we see it in skin. So when you apply corticosteroid to skin, because the skin produces keratin and is many layers thick, you lose the keratin production in your skin because steroids turn it off like they turn off mucus production. And of course you'll get thinning of the skin, which is reversible, and the hairs will sometimes drop out if you use corticosteroid in one place long enough. But it's all reversible because it's got to do with the sort of catabolic effects of yeah. corticosteroids. But in the airway, the airway is not the epidermis of the skin. It is a single layer of respiratory epithelium. It doesn't undergo atrophy. All you're doing by applying the corticosteroids is an anti-inflammatory response. You do decrease mucus production, which is an advantageous thing in, in asthma and allergic rhinitis. Yeah. And, and for some reason, this idea that you have to have a break from them or stop them somehow has crept into an intranasal corticosteroid sort of folklore. When, when we don't treat asthma like that, we don't take our asthma patients and say, listen, you've been using your asthma puffer now for 13 weeks, you have to stop. Never, because never but, come but across but that. I, I have. I've had, I've had patients being told them that, that, that I was told to stop my corticosteroid because somehow it was bad for me. Oh, uh, I, don't, yeah. I don't think that... Well, see, we that, could lay that, lay that one to rest as well. Yes, well, I, I think, th I think that's the that. sort of thing we need to get out. Yeah, and they're actually the sort of basic things that are in the literature that John suggested that when you hand out as a technique, that some of those uh, myths are raised and addressed. Often when somebody got more severe allergic rhinitis, mm -hmm. initiating treatment will suggest that they use the inhaled na nasal steroids twice a day. Yes. Is there any difference between using two puffs in each nostril once a day or separating the dose into twice a day? Um, well, I think it depends a little bit on, on the, um, the individual person as much as it does on the, the actual product. Um, most uh, of the... Uh, well, certainly the newer of the intranasal corticosteroids uh, are, are one-a-day uh, doses, so 24-hour therapy. Mm. Uh, I must say, though, and, and, and maybe this is just kind of an empirical thing, um, if someone has, in my mind, a, a severe allergic rhinitis, I would initially suggest to them they use their in, in, um, intranasal corticosteroid twice a day for a few days, and then subsequently once a day. So whether whether there's a difference... Is that to in, give them twice the chance that it'll be absorbed? Well, uh, well I, I, I think that um, with, with fluticasone and mimetazone particularly, uh, once a day is generally considered sufficient. Um, but um, I, I, I guess um, in, in a way, uh, to my mind, it's indicating to, to uh, the, the patient that they might need a larger dose for the first few days. Mm. But whether they did it once or twice a day... It probably, doesn't, probably matter doesn't matter too much. It probably yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. So you could say, you know, two puffs in each nostril for the first few days and then subsequently one puff in each nostril. I don't know that there would be much of a difference there. And, Richard, is there a limit to how much your, nose can, your nasal mucosa can absorb? Yeah, look, so I, I actually agree with John. I think John's got a really nice regime there. I, if someone is steroid naive, mm. saturating them, saturating their glucocorticoid receptors quickly, it don't make sense. And there were some studies that looked at twice daily dosing for acute rhinitis and rhinosinusitis showed that was beneficial. Mm.